Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gode. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery. And today I'm going to talk to you about another very interesting topic. This may help us to understand and clear many of the doubts that we have of stimulation of the ovaries. Now, this was a paper which was written, rather a PhD thesis, which was written by Christopher Bockeel, who worked with Paul Devroy. And what it looks at, it looks at improving the follicular phase in a IVF cycles. There are two challenges in IVF cycle. One, you improve the first half where you improve the follicular phase and you're able to get mature oocytes of reasonably good quality and good number. And the second challenge is fixing the luteal phase. So let us see what questions can come up. Question number one. Does elevated progesterone on day two of a stimulated cycle lower results? In 2004, we said yes, it does lower results. And that is what is going to be tested today. Next, oral contraceptive pretreatment may lower results, and this was from 2010. The gestogen component of the pill may have a negative effect on endometrial receptivity. Also, you see a lower amount of endogenous LH. And there is a possibility that you may impair oocyte competence if your LH is very low. So the, the concept here, which was tested, is what happens if you pretreat with Proganova rather than using the oral contraceptive pill. So let's go to question number one. Is there a role of measuring progesterone on day two of a stimulated cycle and then canceling the cycle? So they divided this into two groups. Group one is you started stimulation with 150 of recombinant FSH to 225 and started antagonist day six, day seven. Number two, you decided in those women who had a high progesterone, you decided to suppress it. And how did you suppress it? You gave the antagonist for three days from the second day of the cycle, which lowered the progesterone, and then you started the stimulation. So the control group was a day to start. The non-control group was where the progesterone was higher, and that was a start with three days of antagonist. It was confirmed that the progesterone levels went down and stimulation was started. And what did it show? And that's very interesting. 484 patients, abnormal progesterone on day two were noted in 30 patients. The antagonist was given. Pregnancy no rates were not different from either the control group or the other groups. He did a second thing. He said, well, in, just let's look at the start of antagonist on day two as a pretreatment. And he gave the antagonist for three days and a control group started on gonadotrophins. Now these women, the progesterone was not higher. And he said, if you give the antagonist or if you didn't give the antagonist on day two, with the aim to further suppress the progesterone, pregnancy rates were similar. The second thing is about estrogen pretreatment. Now, the logic was that if you gave the pill, you may have a lower pregnancy rates. So the control group was a normal start on day two of the treatment. 150 of recombinant FSH was given and the antagonist started around day seven. The pretreatment group Estrogen varilate, 4 milligram, was given from day 25 
for about the maximum of 10 days. So which time were they giving? They were giving in the luteal follicular phase. The pill was stopped and stimulation was started with 150 of FSH and later on the antagonist was started. 86 patients were seen and what did it tell us? If you pre-treat, your duration is going to be longer of stimulation. You also use less of FSH and the proportion of women going in for a weekend egg collection is significantly reduced. Pregnancy rates are exactly the same. So let's go back. If you have somebody with PCO, you don't want to put her on a long protocol. You want to put her on the antagonist protocol. Then it makes sense to give them a pretreatment, either in the follicle or the luteal phase, and then start the stimulation. And what it tells us is, one, you can still use the antagonist protocol. And number two, you can avoid weekend egg collections. The concept three, if you delay the FSH, now what is it called? It so calls prolonging the follicular phase. What happens? So they looked at one start, which was a day two start of the period, 150 of recombinant FSH. And the other was a start on day five of the period. So the stimulation was started on day five and the antagonist started on day six. And you'd expect if you're starting late, then the results will be worse. Often we think, well, what happens if you start the antagonist late? And again, this is more likely to be in, to be in good responders. And in fact, even by starting the stimulation late, the total number of cumulus oocyte was similar, fertilization rates and miscarriage rates were similar, and the ongoing pregnancy rates were exactly similar. Now, there's something more we learn from this, that if you start the gonadotrophins on day two, then your LH levels are going to be higher. Now, theoretically, where can you use this? If you see cases in which you cannot, you, your freezing is not brilliant, and you're persistently going up with high LH or high progesterone levels, in those cases, delaying the start of FSH on a mild stimulation can probably allow you to do a fresh transfer. Again, this is, these are a few concepts which you can think about. Next, you must have heard of Filicori, who came up with this concept that you can replace HMG with HCG. If you go deeper into the understanding of pharmacology of the drugs that we use, you realize that a large amount of LH does come from placental HCG sources, but that's a completely different discussion. So what did they do in this case? They gave 200 of recombinant FSH from day two and continued as a normal cycle with the antagonist on day six or day seven. In the low-dose HCG group, they did something different. They gave 200 of recombinant FSH from day two, and later on, added after day seven, day eight, they added HCG 200 international units daily. So the treatment duration was not very different. The implantation rates and pregnancy rates were the same and the histological dating was slightly different. What does this tell us? This tells us that you can effectively use HCG in place of HMG at very low doses, and it seems to work. Now, certain old concepts of the early follicular phase, does progesterone levels at the start of the cycle, are they a challenge? Probably yes, but it's still based on old evidence. What we do know is that if you add the antagonist in the early follicular phase, you seem to get normalized progesterone levels. And this, there is some evidence, may give a higher number of cumulus oocyte complex. And it may be allow, allow us to use it in donor cycles. If you decide to use pretreatment, 
it allows you to avoid a weekend egg collection and also it doesn't affect results. If you want to go for a minimal stimulation with minimal rise of your LH and progesterone, delaying the start on day five is a possibility. In the late follicular phase, if you add 200 of HCG, it works exactly like HMG. And this is something which we don't, we have known, but we don't use often. The substitution of FSH can be done with HCG, which effectively acts as HMG. There's an advantage because HCG in the luteal phase intervenes in a regulation of endometrial differentiation and may have a positive impact by increasing blood flow. Also, there is some evidence that if you give HCG in the follicular phase, your endometrial receptivity may increase. Now, these are again a very basic changes. These are basic concepts which we are reviewing and challenging in the follicular phase. Our aim is again, can you improve and can you have a better cohort of follicles? And if you can, that will give us a much better cohort of embryos which we can replace. Thank you.